and university has a holiday, so um, we are fine with the lower numbers today, but I will be here anyways, uh, talking about social support. Um, and feel free to stop and ask questions as we go or participate uh, as you would like. So just some quick defend announcements. We will not have a Friday session next week, which is April 2nd. Um, so you get the week off, but we will be having the personalized coaching sessions throughout the week. So Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, uh, definitely join in, ask your questions, get all your post spring break, pre Easter weekend, pre summer questions uh, in for all of our experts. We will be back on April 9th uh, talking, we will have a guest speaker talking about social influences. So we're talking about social support today and social influences in two weeks because it's a really important topic, especially for DEFEND. So that is what is coming up. Our challenge for the week is kind of an update, a check-in. We're midway through the, the program. So share how your goals are going, what has maybe worked for you, any challenges that you have. And again, you can either share it on Facebook or you can email it directly to Defend. Is that correct, Emma? Yes, kind of just a check-in week for everyone. All right, perfect. Keeping us on track. All right. So today I am very excited to talk about social support. And this is a little bit ironic. I gave another session this week that was all about social support and accountability for faculty at the U of A. Uh, so some of you were, were part of that. Um, but I did a little bit of a expert survey. So Dr. Bob Davis is one of our faculty in public health. All of his research is related to behavior change um, and theories and all sorts of important stuff. He'll be talking to you guys later in Defend. Um, but I asked him, you know, what was his take on social support that I was talking about it this afternoon? What should I share? And this is a direct quote. I told him I was quoting him. Um, social support is everything. We know how it influences our behavior, our mental state, our overall health and oftentimes it is lacking. So we'll talk a little bit today about what is social support, different types of social support, and maybe some tips to help improve our social networks. So everybody's in gardening mode. I've seen lots of pace, posts on Facebook about people starting their gardens, at least out here in Arkansas, especially around Little Rock area. So I figured I'd go with a, a garden theme of tomatoes. My tomatoes usually look like the ones on the right, I would have to say. Um, and so we're gonna talk a little bit about the good, the great, and the ugly of social support because there's no really bad, it's mostly good. So from the Mayo Clinic, the, they list some various different benefits of social support, which uh, their focus for this website is really on mental health and stress. And so we know that social support can help us in stressful situations with any distress that we have. It's just good for overall mental health, self-esteem, but it is also important for our physical health. So things like lowering cardiovascular risk, lowering blood pressure, promoting healthy lifestyle behaviors like physical activity and nutrition, which are most relevant for DEFEND, um, and encouraging adherence to any type of treatment plan. So if you're thinking about losing weight, going on a diet, getting regular physical activity, social support and a social network can help us uh, with all of those. We haven't talked too much about the community guide before, but it's a great resource. Uh, you can either Google the community guide or you, the link is at the bottom of this slide, but it's not just focused on physical activity or nutrition. I use it for physical activity because that's my area of expertise, um, but it's a great resource for evidence-based interventions. So they have teams of experts that go through all the research on different types of interventions for different behaviors, whether it's drug use, um, hydration, nutrition, et cetera. And then they basically summarize them and determine, you know, is this an effective strategy that we should be using or not? 
Um, and so they actually have a specific uh, page, a specific review on social support interventions for physical activity. Uh, included nine different studies in the community, and it's pretty ri rigorous on which studies get included. So it's not just any study at all that's ever been done. Um, that's why the, the number is a little bit low. But still, nine different studies included a lot of different participants, and they found that all nine studies increased some uh, type of physical activity depending on what they measured. So time spent in physical activity, if we're thinking about minutes, on average, it increased it by 44%. Frequency of physical activity, so how often you do physical activity, increased by about 20%. And aerobic capacity, which is a measure of our fitness or our, our cardiorespiratory aerobic fitness, increased by about 5%. So overall, physical activity uh, does improve with social support. Um, and interestingly, they found that while both frequent and less frequent support can increase physical activity, more frequent support increases physical activity more, as you would expect. Um, and they did look at highly structured social support, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, versus less formal, and they both had equal effects on physical activity. So it may not matter the type of social support that you're getting, but just that you're getting it and that it's frequent. Dr. Baum and I uh, worked on a study together a couple years ago and it's breaking news. Now, the study just got accepted this week for publication, so it'll be out, you can read it uh, hopefully soon. But it was just a small study with some of our faculty and staff on campus trying to use social support to increase physical activity. So it was a walking intervention that we were trying to get 150 minutes a day of physical activity because that's our, our goal. And we had two different groups. One was an actual in-person group. So those wonderful uh, folks met with us every day, five days a week to go on a half an hour walk on campus for four weeks. And then the other group was a virtual social support. So they never met uh, each other except in the very beginning, if they came to the meeting uh, to learn how to use their Fitbits. But they had fitness trackers that they tracked their physical activity, and then they would report their physical activity through a group social messaging app. So after they did a walk, they would send it to the group and they could comment on each other. They could share tips and strategies. They didn't have to. Um, but we did find that both groups increased their physical activity. The virtual group actually increased their physical activity more um, which there may be lots of reasons like tracking and feedback that we've talked about before in DEFEND that might have been effective. Um, and interestingly, even in four weeks, both groups ended up losing weight, improved their cardiovascular fitness, improved their muscular endurance, as well as their cognitive performance, because uh, we were interested in that as well. Um, and this figure here is just showing, we asked our participants what they liked about the intervention, what they didn't like. And both groups, their kind of primary takeaway is they really liked the group support. They liked accountability from being part of a group, whether it was a virtual in-person. Um, the in-person group loved uh, kind of the solidarity and encouragement they got from other um, members. And the virtual group liked the socialization and motivation. So both groups really appreciated the social support and connection, whether it was in person or virtual, which is even more relevant uh, for COVID. So that's the good, the great. Uh, and also, I'll bring this up as the ugly, although it kind of looks a little cool. So social support is good at encouraging positive behaviors, but we know that can also encourage negative behaviors. So this is a study in the New England Journal of Medicine, which is a really great journal. Uh, you've done well in your career if you get a study published in here. And it's looking at the Framingham Heart Study, which has been going on uh, since the 1950s in Framingham, Massachusetts. And they've basically followed thousands of people in this town I think they're now on the third or fourth generation. And they essentially ask them a lot about their health behaviors. They come in and they do a health assessment and they see what happens to them. Do they get heart disease? Do they get cancer? Do they die? When, how old are they? 
Um, and so this is a study looking at the connections between these people from Framingham over 32 years and specifically looking at obesity. So what they found, um, this figure here is each little dot is an individual person uh, and the yellow dots represent those who are uh, obese, the green dots are normal weight um, and they're just mapping the connections between them. It's a lot of people, you don't need to necessarily understand the figure, but what they found is that both biological connections as well as behavioral connections seem to influence obesity. And the way that they look at this is between people who know each other. So if they're in the same neighborhood, for example, versus they have a genetic connection. So if they're siblings, for example. Um, and so that they found that there were these clusters of overweight and obesity, and that generally this kind of social influence extends to about three degrees of separation. So me, to my friend, to their friend, to their spouse, we might have some type of social connection in our obesity related to some of these behaviors, but also um, potentially biologic connections. Um, so they actually looked at siblings and they found that among adult siblings, if over time, so again, they're tracking them over 32 years, if one of those siblings became obese, the other sibling had a 40% chance of becoming obese as well. Um, they also looked at spouses. We know our spouses have a big influence on our behaviors. If a spouse became obese, the other spouse would have a risk of becoming obese increased by 37%. So both around 40%. So if the people that we spend a lot of time around or have a genetic connection with, so siblings and spouses, um, if they become obese, we're also very likely to come, become obese. So we want to make sure that our social networks, our friends, that we're encouraging everybody uh, to practice healthy behaviors. So what exactly is social support? Uh, it consists of these four types uh, of social support, and we'll go through those on the next slide, but it's emotional, instrumental, informational, and appraisal. It is interactive. And it has been shown in multiple studies to improve health or well being of the recipient. And it's consistently associated with physical activity, although there are some variations by gender, demographic, um, on how that specific relationship works. So, the different types of social support often we think of emotional, you know, giving a hug, being there to support you. Um, those people who we're really close to, we think social networks are social circles. But there's also instrumental support. So this is actual tangible things that someone can provide for us. The example, I do research with kids' physical activity. So a great example of this is a parent providing transportation for a kid to get to soccer practice. That's instrumental social support. Informational support is uh, providing advice, suggestions, information, obviously, uh, to help uh, change a behavior or address a problem. Um, this is one of the big focuses from DEFEND from the beginning, is to provide some information about nutrition and physical activity. And then lastly, appraisal, which is related to feedback, um, that we've talked about before. So providing information for self-evaluation. So if somebody tells you, maybe your doctor, for example, tells you that you have lost weight, uh, that might be positive reinforcement, positive feedback uh, to help you maintain a behavior. So all of these different types of social support are important and we can get them from different sources. This is a table uh, just illustrating that there, again, there's kind of different components of social support. We're not exactly sure, you know, what the perfect type of social support is. It probably varies per person. Um, but just to go through a couple of them. So reciprocity is how much of an exchange there is between people providing support. So 
like the example before with a doctor and a patient, usually that's uh, not so much reciprocity. That's usually the doctor giving social support to the patient. And that's kind of the end of it. Whereas, you know, with a sibling, a friend, a spouse, you might have more interaction within that social support. Um, complexity looks at different uh, types of social support or maybe social support for different areas. Uh, you might have one person who provides social support just for physical activity and nutrition, while you might have another friend who you just, you know, talk to, you like to hang out on the weekends and it's more for your mental health. So we can have different relationships for different uh, areas of social support. Um, and I think something interesting to note is the geographic dispersion. So we can either be in close proximity or distanced. And this was before COVID. And so now we know that we can still get social support even if you know it's not our neighbor or someone in the same house. So here are some tips from Mayo Clinic in terms of helping to build our social support networks. One is staying in touch uh, and answering phone calls or replying to texts if somebody texts you so that you're, you're continuing and sustaining those relationships. This is something that uh, I have to keep on reminding myself and we talk about with our colleagues is not to compete with each other. We're all on our own journeys. And so sometimes if you're talking about a health behavior with somebody, uh, you might feel like it's a competition and everybody's trying to one up each other, but keep your mind in yourself, it's not a competition. It's important to listen as well uh, when, so it doesn't become a one way uh, type of social support. Be careful not to overdo it, uh, especially now. So, you know, don't cry wolf, but make sure that you stay in touch regularly. Be sure to thank those in your life who are providing social support for you and make sure that you're providing social support for them when they need it as well. So some social support tips during social distancing, especially around physical activity and nutrition. So all of you are already involved in DEFEND and one of our focuses this time is really to provide some of that social support, whether through the Facebook group, these Friday calls, being able to reach out to our coaches, getting some personal advice, being able to talk to somebody. Um, so that's a great way to get social support. Technology can be really great for getting social support. I'll challenge you guys to try and make it as active as you can. Um, my family had a bit of a game night. I wasn't really active, but you could play charades uh, on Zoom, get everybody up and moving. Physical letters, we forget about those. Um, there's been some great projects sending letters to folks in nursing homes. Uh, from our self-talk group, you can send messages so you actually have a physical reminder of some of that positive self-talk uh, to some of your social network. Walking and talking, this is one of my favorites. Sometimes I'll take walking meetings or I'll talk to my parents while I'm walking, on, walking and talking uh, on the phone. And my focus is physical activity, but this can also work for cooking. So you can have a, a Zoom call with someone while you're cooking a healthy meal. I know Dr. Baum has done some cooking challenges that always look pretty awesome where you have a list of ingredients that you have to cook and you see what everybody comes up with and then you get together and you share your final recipes virtually uh, or socially distanced. There's a lot of virtual 5Ks, so some friendly competition, you can sign up with a friend. Um, and we've talked about walk across Northwest Arkansas before. So there's a lot of these virtual challenges that you can join as part of a team. You can join as part of the defend team or maybe your colleagues at work um, just to provoke to promote that accountability um, and social connection with each other. So the last thing I'm just gonna have everybody kind of think about what your social support system is and maybe how we can make it better and strengthen it. So first you can just kind of think to yourself, who are the people and organizations who help you? And you may think about it for physical activity or nutrition or just in general. And so you might think about your spouse, do they help or do they hinder your healthy choices? Parents, children, if you have them, 
any other relatives that may be close or far, uh, different friends that you have, um, or other caregivers you might have supporting you, medical professionals, doctors, your regular doctor, family physician, nurses, you may be part of a specific support group. We'll call defend a support group. Uh, your church, you might be involved in that and have some social support system, different groups or clubs, whether it's a community center, a nonprofit, a school. So you may have kids in school uh, or we'll say the university as a large as a whole, also as a school, different professional agencies you may be involved in, um, different social services, public health, activity programs, maybe you're a local parks and recreation program. So these are just some examples of all the different places that we can potentially uh, get social support from. So the next suggestion is to identify at least one of those people who helped you in each of the following ways. So again, these are different types of that social support. So somebody who might provide physical or practical assistance uh, might be an example of that. And they don't all have to be the same person either. So for example, my husband, he often will cook dinner uh, for our family. And so he's providing usually a healthy meal, providing resources and information. We all have Defend, um, but I default to Dr. Baum about some healthy nutrition uh, advice often, or Jamie as well on the call, our, our new RD nutrition expert someone who provides emotional or psychological assistance. For me, these are some friends that I have uh, that can help me in that area of social support and providing a positive outlook or attitude. Who of these people do you know are generally make you feel better and uh, keep you positive? The next questions are kind of to reflect on maybe what are some challenges. So what are some of the practical reasons you have maybe that have prevented you from using some of these people as social support? COVID might be a, a big one now. So in terms of social distancing, maybe time differences, and maybe not wanting to um, draw too much on their time. Um, similarly, what are some beliefs or attitudes you may have? You may feel guilty for reaching out to them or other uh, factors. And this is just to show that the relationship goes two ways. So some beliefs or attitudes you may have from preventing them from offering support and then preventing you from actually accepting that support. And the last one is just to think about that I'll leave you with is how maybe could you take to, what steps could you take in the next week or the next month to overcome some of those barriers and maybe seek out some positive social support uh, connections. And that is it for today. So does anybody have any questions? or want to share any um, tips that they've had for maintaining social connections during COVID? And that is all good. So again, I want to we'll kind of leave you with the Friday thought, reflect on who your social support network is, maybe some barriers and how you can maybe reach out to one person today to help support them in physical activity and nutrition, but also to have them help support you. And with that, that is it for this week. Again, we will not have the session next Friday, but we will have the personalized co coaching sessions through the week. Uh, and we'll see you all again two weeks from today on April 9th.
Have a great weekend. Enjoy some sunshine, hopefully.